Yes, we're in the uh, King Ori room at Cabinet Office and uh, Treasury Minister uh, Alfred Cannon is there, the Health Minister David Ashford is there and the Enterprise Minister Lawrence Skelly is there also. But let's first of all hear from the Chief Minister Howard Quayle. Well, good afternoon everyone and thank you all very much for coming today. The Council of Ministers met today to establish measures to protect the island and its residents in light of the developing global coronavirus pandemic. Decisions have had to be made in the best interests of our community and economy. A great deal of work has taken place over the past few days and weeks. I am now able to announce anyone arriving in the Isle of Man from 23 hours and 59 minutes tomorrow, in other words, 1 minute to 12, on the 17th of March, will be required to take immediate action. Those displaying symptoms of coronavirus and those not displaying symptoms of coronavirus will be required to self-isolate for at least 14 days to eliminate the possibility they are carrying infection. We are advising people aged 70 and over to self-isolate to prevent the possibility of being infected and more guidance will be issued shortly. The 2020 Isle of Man TT is cancelled to protect our critical care services. Schools will remain open. Testing in the community will be stepped up with immediate effect. Due to the measures being introduced today, at this stage, government will not be placing any restriction on public gatherings. The government will take necessary steps to postpone both the 2020 local authority general elections and the Douglas South by-election until further notice. A package of measures will be introduced by the Treasury to support our workforce and protect the economy. We are taking action to protect our residents and to ensure life can continue as normal as possible during this unpredictable time. We are advising against all non-essential travel off the island. The measures being introduced from tomorrow are aimed at minimising the risk of those arriving in the island infecting our population. We still have no confirmed COVID-19 cases, but residents should continue to be vigilant over hygiene and hand washing and help friends and neighbours who would appreciate some support. Some retailers are already making provision for the infirm and elderly to shop for provisions, and that is the kind of community spirit we need at this time. I urge residents to be responsible when shopping and think of others rather than buy more than is necessary. We are entering a period when life will be different and must work together through patience, cooperation and consideration. We will issue regular updates as the situation evolves. I'm now more than happy for the team to ask, answer any questions you may have. Adrian. Uh, you say there's no confirmed cases currently. Is it your belief that actually they're probably likely to be cases in the island that haven't been detected yet? David, would you like to answer that? There is never a guarantee that there isn't some form of mild cases on the island. Um, that's been exactly the same as any other jurisdiction. As I've said, we are going to be upping our testing in the community. So anyone who's developing symptoms and reports the symptoms will get tested. Um, so that will give us a much broader base. If there'd been longer term infection in the community, though, we would have by now have expected someone to have present, and that hasn't happened. Yeah. There, there's been many more people who have been tested in the Channel Islands, for instance. But there's several, reason, there's several reasons for that, which is firstly, the Channel Islands has had more people actually returning from infected regions. So the actual testing criteria that the Isle of Man has been applying has been exactly the same as that applied in the Channel Islands. There's been no difference at all. Now, as far as the um, over 70s going into self-isolation is concerned, that's, that's advisory at the moment, but, but how, you, how workable do you see that? Um, what does it actually entail for the over 70s? Are they allowed to go in their garments? You know, what, what, what restrictions on movement on a practical level are, are we talking about? The practical level is we're talking social distancing. 
Yeah. So, for instance, with the over 70s, we would suggest that they, particularly if they've got underlying health conditions, that they don't necessarily just go around their daily lives. Lots of them may be involved in church faiths, various organisations that they may wish to reconsider for the short period of time, whether or not they wish to be involved in that. If I can say going into your garden is more than acceptable. Yes. Obviously, this is moving fairly fluid and fast, and obviously we'll be giving regular updates as the weeks go by. Both myself, the Minister for Health and Social Care, the Treasury Minister, the Minister for Enterprise, we will, along with um, key medical officers, will be giving updates to the um, members of the press to keep you all updated and to inform the public. We've had a lot of comments about flattening the curve at the peak of this uh, coronavirus outbreak and the advice is there, test, test, test. Even today, just before we've come into this room, the World Health Organization is saying you can't fight this without regular tests. Are we doing enough? And that is why we've moved away from the health advice in the UK, which is limiting tests purely to those that have been hospitalised. Um, we are actually going with testing in the community because quite rightly, as you say, the whole thing is about flattening the curve. And if you look at other small jurisdictions around the world, one of the reasons those that have had cases have been able to cope with it up, to, up so far is because they've been able to very quickly do the trace back as to who those people have been in contact with. So therefore, break the chain and get them to self-isolate as well. What, what do you specifically mean by testing in the community? So testing in the community is people who are presenting symptoms, who may well ring up and report the fact that um, they're actually doing symptoms, and we will go out and test them. A lot of people over 70 are going to find it very difficult to be homebound and staying away from society, from social contact. What measures, if any, are you going to be able to put in to at least alleviate that? So there's be, we're going to look to work with community groups um, to be uh, for deliveries to the home. I've already had contact with several community groups interested in doing this. We're also working with the retailers. So there's a whole package of measures that we're looking to put in place to help support people um, and obviously help their families as well. And what period are we talking about? Is this indefinite for you? So the period will be reviewed. Um, at the moment, it is simply advised to self-isolate. The one thing I have to stress, though, is we're in a very different situation to the UK in the fact we have had no confirmed cases. So that means we've got a unique window of opportunity to do things differently and ensure that the island is in a much better position. But you're not saying self-isolate for a set period of time. This is... Not at, the, not at this stage. No, not, not at this stage, Andy, but it's, this is fast moving and fluid and we just have to keep on stressing that. We will be giving regular updates to the people of the Isle of Man as the situation unfolds and best advice will, will be given as we go along. Yeah. Could, could it move from advisory to mandatory? I mean... I, th I, think, I think that's speculation at the moment. Yeah. Um, let's deal with the situation we actually have. We're not in the same situation as the UK. We haven't had any confirmed cases. What we are announcing today is practical measures to try and prevent spread in the community, to prevent cases emerging, um, and that is where we are stand at the moment. And what's prompted the much more robust approach? You know, clearly things have changed dramatically everywhere over the last few days. Are, are you, is this guidance from Public Health England or the UK government or just the, the, the worldwide... Yeah. This is, guidance, this is guidance that's in the best interests of the Isle of Man. Um, as, as we've said in previous interviews, um, we've been looking for a while now at what guidance we follow. Up until now, the Public Health England guidance has been <coughs> practical and applicable, but we now believe with the changing situation in our neighbouring jurisdictions, now is the time for us to look at our situation. We've got a very different um, situation here in the island. We've got a window of opportunity to do things differently, and I think now is the time to be doing that. Can I ask about the uh, TT cancellation? We've uh, learnt just before this press conference that a statement's due from the North West 200 organisers to say they've called their event off as well. Regularly we've been told, yet yeah, we're planning as, uh, as we go and the message has been continuity. Do you think government has failed to some respect keep the public on side because the messaging has been poor? 
No, I, I would disagree with that. Um, this this really has been very fast moving, and uh, the northwest. I think only just a few days ago, last week, we're confirming the event was still going. So uh, what we've done here is uh, we've taken into consideration the events that have happened, particularly over the over the weekend, which have been extremely fast moving. And uh, even as we speak, the prime minister is actually making a statement there that uh, we will need to consider other measures uh, as we go forward. Um, Making this decision for the TT, uh, we regret it, obviously, uh, but I think it is absolutely the right decision for the health and the security of the Isle of Man, which is a priority. But we are extremely conscious that this will have a financial impact. So the quarantine measures that are being introduced from tomorrow night is not just going to impact the TT, but is actually going to impact our tourism industry and our hospitality industry. And we're very conscious of that. And Treasury Minister and I will be making uh, uh, changes to legislation recommended in, in Timwell tomorrow. That will be the first wave of support for industry and not just industry, but employees as well at the same time. But don't you feel, though, that information at the time of a crisis is key we don't get updates on the testing situation over the weekend. It's perception out there with the public. And we've got the Director of Public Health on holiday. Well, uh, information is key, and, include, and this is why we're here today. We've had an emergency meeting with our council ministers, and uh, we have made, I believe, decisive uh, action here that is protecting the Isle of Man's health and security interests. I think it's and also worth pointing out that until recently we were being advised by the United Kingdom mm. Um, health service that open air um, events were safe and, and fine because the chances of spreading it compared with cancelling and having people sitting in bars where there'd be a greater spread of, of any virus. That was the most recent advice. So as I've been saying, things have been moving fast and are fairly fluid and that's why we've had to make this decision now. But don't you feel you haven't brought the public on side because you've seemed lax, it seemed to lack leadership? <laughs> Hang on, Tim. At every single interview I have done mm. around this, and we've done several mm -hmm. ourselves, when the references come to TT, I have stated we will follow the public health advice and that the situation is fluid and that situation may change. I've done that in every single interview. The situation is changing and that is why we've made this I'm decision. Really and merely reflecting the views that we're getting from the public, which are saying there's been no leadership here. Well, if I po point out that the... the health minister gave a, a number of interviews only on Friday, today is Monday, and we've never said no to anyone for an interview on, on their mm. views um, if they want to ask us questions on this. So we've made some big decisions that needed to be made. It's clear to the public and we'll be going forward with regular updates as we now move forward. I think the speed with which the United Kingdom mm -hmm. has moved in its process and the number of cases has meant that we've had to move Quickly too. Can we just talk about the economic impact, not just of the TT being cancelled this year, but the effect on tourism, the effect on jobs and lives here on the Isle of Man, Treasury Minister Alfred Cannon? Yes, as well as a serious health crisis, we have a serious and significant economic challenge in front of us. Tomorrow, I will be going to Tinwald with a package of measures to help support our economy and help support our people. I will be asking Tinwald to support the transfer of £40 million into the contingency fund from where Treasury can access such money as it needs uh, in the best interests of our economy and our people. I will be bringing forward proposals for a national insurance holiday for employers in the following sectors, tourist accommodation, catering and leisure, travel and tour operators and logistics companies. We will have a £3,000 grant available for businesses in the same sectors. We will be paying compensation of £20 per employee per day to those employers who are paying sick pay to individuals who are either sick or self-isolating as a result of this crisis. A scheme will be introduced in the coming days for the hotel industry to promote more substantial support in light of the announcements that have come forward today. Uh, as I've already announced, incapacity benefit will be immediately available uh, for those who need it and for the self-employed and self-certification uh, of sickness will now be extended to 14 days. Can I just ask about, we've got probably, the, I think, the last statistic, we had the fourth most elderly population in the world they're going to be very alarmed at what they're hearing 
here today. What words of reassurance can you offer them? Well, we've been planning for this for a while. I hope you can see that the measures that have just been announced, they didn't happen this morning. We've been working on this for a number of weeks to make sure that when we felt it necessary that we introduced these measures. Our health service has been working hard behind the scenes to carry out try dry runs of situations. We've got all our departments looking at what services are key so that we can carry on despite um, a potential outbreak on the Isle of Man. So an awful lot of work behind the scenes has been done to ensure that we are as well prepared as possible. And as I say, we'll be giving regular updates to the public to let them know as things move along. Was consideration ever given to simply postponing rather than cancelling the TT? Yes, uh, we did, uh, Adrian, have a consideration about uh, postponement. And uh, we felt that uh, given the, uh, the different profile of what the classic TT and the Manx Grand Prix uh, would be, that uh, we did decided against that particular option and uh, cancellation for the TT with a focus to try and at this moment in time to retain that event as it currently stands. Can I just ask the Health Minister how many ventilators we have on the island, how many intensive care beds? So in terms of intensive care beds, um, standard beds we have eight beds, but the department has contingency planning, um, which we've been doing for several months now, and in fact we recently did an interview on just this, um, as to how we would expand capacity if required. But the important thing, which you mentioned yourself before, is about flattening the curve, and that's exactly what these measures that we're announcing here today seek to do. They actually seek to give the reassurance to residents that we we are looking to keep the island safe. There have been comments made that we've just been following Public Health England, following the, the British government's lead, but there seems to be clearly a, a change of attitude, a change of strategy by the Isle of Man government today. Because the situation has changed, the situation within the UK has changed, and again to be fair, the one thing that my department, Department of Health and Social Care, has said all along is we have followed the Public Health England advice because we believe it's sensible and applicable to the island, but if that changed then we would do what was right for the island and that and it, things have changed and that's exactly what we've done. Yeah, I think the significant outbreak in the United Kingdom has led us to make that change now, which we have planned for a while and, and, and we're now moving forward to protect the people of the Isle of Man. Uh, a practical point, patient transfers, presumably the, the self-isolation rules apply to those as well, don't they? They will indeed. Mm. Further to that, Health Minister, uh, can you assure us that the island's health system has the resources and the capacity to cope with it? I'll be making a further statement to Tim or Tomo, at which, um, which point I'll be out li um, laying out the different changes that we'll be making to make the system more robust, that in the event there is an outbreak that we can cope. I'll be making those statements in Timor tomorrow. Yeah, there'll be three st statements made. I'll be making one, then the Health Minister, and then the Treasury Minister outlining the proposals taking forward. What's being done to protect the import of crucial essential goods to the island? Well, I think, I think the first thing we need to state is this isn't a lockdown, this isn't a closure mm -hmm. of the borders. Freight will still be coming into the island as normal. Is, is, is a lockdown actually theoretically possible? I mean, is, is, is that something you could do? Well, Theoretically, but we have all our, we obviously need the steam packet to be able to bring in our supplies, um, f food and, and clothes and, and all medicines, etc. In, in terms of passengers, is that something that you... you well, it's not something we're planning for, but if, I, I say this is fast moving and fluid, so if, if a situation arose, then it's something we would have to consider, but we're not considering it at this moment in time. I, I think at this point, speculation on things other than what's been mm. announced today is rather unhelpful, to be honest. What do you say to the people who have been going to all the superstores, panic buying? Absolute chaos, apparently, at all the superstores on the Isle of Man. People waiting outside this morning, absolutely buying up anything and everything that has a loo roll attached to it, almost. <laughs> It's been very disappointing that people would do that. Having said that, I was in, in, in Peel at the weekend and I went round ShopRite and there, there was plenty of supplies. However, people have to be more responsible and that's part of our messaging. And I will be, if this continues, I will be taking measures accordingly. And, and if I can lay out, just to give those who are panic buying an example, people are talking about protecting the vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Last week, I had a 91-year-old constituent who couldn't get her basic goods including toilet paper, etc., and I had to go out and try and find her some because she only gets out once a week. 
um, because she has mobility problems. So that's the impact of people's panic buying. There is no need for panic buying. Freight is still coming into the island, and as all the retailers have said, not just here but in the UK as well, the supply chains are still strong. The only reason there is a shortage is because people are buying excessively more than they need. That's partly because they're worried. It's unprecedented times. But the island has a good history of being a, a community, a caring community. Mm. Look at the poppy appeals, mm. for example. We're top of the uh, per capita list every year, it seems, going back as far as I can remember. Would you appeal to the island's com community spirit to come out for people to look after each other, look out for each other. I absolutely. I I'm asking people to be considerate. We already have been swamped by the number of people volunteering to help their neighbours and we will be setting up schemes to look after vulnerable people who are isolated or who maybe are having to isolate and need supplies getting to them. And it It's been really gratifying that the an awful lot of people are prepared to help and support their neighbours and that's something we will be working on. But we need to be considerate for everyone on the Isle of Man and I hope that people will realise that there's only a certain amount of space they've got in their houses for toilet roll. It's been very disappointing that and hand wash. Well, I've heard of one lady with a garage full of goods. Well it, it's just disappointing that people are prepared to be that selfish but if it carries on we will take action but I think most people on the Isle of Man are considerate and they'll take into account that their neighbours who may not have the same mobility as they are, they are taking away from them. So we will be working on that. Are you passing new powers? Are you going to tunnel tomorrow with emergency powers so you can control the steam packet? Uh, air traffic controllers working in shifts that don't pollute each other so they can all be ill at the same time and all those sort of things you have to think about by law or are you just asking for support from people? No, I'll be moving powers. Um, when will you do that? In the next couple of days, we, there, there is a certain procedure to do to ensure that people will have to self-isolate. It won't be their choice. By law, they will be made to self-isolate. So because I was on the plane the other day, and yeah. people were coughing and wheezing and sneezing, and it was just unbelievable. And those people just got off and walked out. I mean, there's a sanitizer there. That was about it. Mm -hmm. But in the future, they get off that plane, they get in their cars, and they go home, and then they self-isolate. It all sounds like it's a bit lax, isn't it? There's work, uh, there's work going on between the Department of Health and DOI and we'll be announcing plans as to how that will work shortly. How do you police it though I think is the question isn't it? How do you police it? So in terms of policing of it, um, it will actually be an offence for anyone to break the self-isolation. Um, um, you know, if you look at social media, I think people will be pretty quick to report people, let alone anything else. Um, but the vast majority, but the vast majority of people, um, you know, are very, very sensible. If we ask people to do this, you will always find in 99% of cases people uh, will. In the 1% of cases that won't, they need to be aware that they will be prosecuted. It's not happened though with the shopping, has it? Well, the appeals have gone out and it's not stopped it. Well, anyone who does break it will be prosecuted. Can I, can I just ask you a question? I know there's a lot of information at the start. What's the advice to people from the Isle of Man, people who live on the Isle of Man that are not here at the moment in terms of coming back? Because um, there's students and mm. a lot of parents are worried as universities are closing down and stopping lectures. What's the advice to residents who may wish to come home? Well, they can come home, but obviously they will need to self-isolate for 14 days and we will be um, on the government website, they will be able to see clearly how they should self-isolate for that 14 day period. Even if they show no signs or they have a cough, 14 days they must self-isolate for. But yes, we are planning to enable our, our young people, it's not just our young people, people who are away visiting friends maybe in the UK, we need to get them home, but they will all be made, anyone coming to the Isle of Man by boat or by plane will need to self-isolate for 14 days. Now, healthcare ex exceptions may be made for key members of staff, but they will be um, having to follow a set of procedures to ensure that they will not be affecting people on the island. What about the uh, support of uh, EasyJet and uh, British Airways companies that are reducing services left, right and centre? Is a potential that we could lose those services as well? We be cut off basically from all major airports because of the, the, the they are deciding not to fly, and that's got nothing to do with you whatsoever. You can't make them fly. Well, we can't make them fly, but we are working. The Department of Infrastructure are working with um, our airport providers, our, our sorry, our plane providers, to ensure that key routes 
are maintained. It may not be that you will see three or four flights a day to a certain destination if there isn't the demand from the public. I think if you look at all the press statements at the moment, I think um, EasyJet have announced a 75% reduction in the number of flights that are taking you know, into account. And we will be working with the Department of Infrastructure and the companies that provide that service to ensure that key services such as the flights to Liverpool for the hospital appointments for those that need it. Obviously, if you don't need to be going away quite so often to um, the 10 UK trust hospitals that we use in the northwest, then that will be reduced. But there will be some people who will need to travel and we need to ensure that there is an act, a route for them to get there and back. What happens if the UK goes to the next level of infection and you know it's deemed a place that you shouldn't be flying to? What happens then? Well, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. You, you, you must have thought about it. Though. Well, we, you can't. This is this is fast and fluid, and I don't want yeah. to speculate. You know, we're, we're getting into minutiae that may happen and may not happen. But of course, we'll be thinking it through as we have done with all these measures. Are you still expecting an outbreak here at some point? Are you preparing for that? Yes. Yes. They adjust with the way it has spread around the world, as I have stated all along, it is highly likely that at some point there will be cases on the Alabama. Can I ask about uh, the gig economy and uh, provisions there? Well, we are uh, making some provision for those working in the gig, gig economy. I would say this to everybody. These are serious and significantly challenging times, both for health and for the economy. We are taking every step that we can to prepare the economy for what is happening and to prepare for the security uh, of this island nation in terms of the health of our people. In order to achieve our aims, we will need self-discipline and social discipline, and that will apply both to the general public and to employers on this island as we go forward. I am confident that working together with employers, the Department for Enterprise, the Treasury, and the Department for Health, that we will help to support as many people as possible, whether they be in the gig, economy or in permanent employment as we move forward in the coming weeks and months. So there's no, I think not, not, nothing set in place there. If I can also inter interrupt there Tim, it's also important that we work with the ladies and gentlemen of the press to communicate the relevant information and key factors out to the members of the Daily public. Daily updates we can do? Yeah yes. we're going to be doing regular updates on what's going on seven yeah. days a week. Okay. You might get fed up, I won't be doing every one, we'll be putting the relevant people in, and the website will be updated. If the UK jumps, you just jump right. We, we, we've jumped differently to the UK this time. Sure. Um, we will be looking at best advice, obviously, and as I say, it's fast and fluid. We will make the decisions when they are relevant for the people of the Isle of Man. Can I just ask about some of the key services? Obviously, health is one of them, the police, uh, the workers at the power station, critical services to the island. Are different shift patterns being put in, different measures to make sure that you're minimising the risk of an outbreak within those key institutions? Right, well I'll answer that one and then this, that's the last question for the time being. We've, I've already instructed in Council of Ministers that all departments should look at what are the key elements of their department business, the key services that the public need going forward so that if we have to stop doing less important areas to ensure that the key elements continue then that's what we will do. We've also been doing dry runs where staff have been going home and working from home on their computer systems to ensure that the day job can continue in case we have problems in certain departments. So thank you all very much for coming and we will be making our number of statements in Timble tomorrow morning. Thank, thank you. you all very much. So there we are, the uh, Chief Minister Howard Quayle and uh, we had the Enterprise Minister Lawrence Skelly, Treasury Minister Alfred Cannon and uh, the Health Minister David Ashford. So with that, uh, from the King Ori room within Cabinet Office, we'll hand back to Manx Radio.